What is going on YouTube? Dr. Iway here hitting you up with another video. I've been trying to be more consistent with them. And this video is just a continuation of the other video that I just recently did. I think it was called like Dragon Tamer um, class builds or class types or dragon types or some bullshit or another like that. Just to give you an idea, introduction to, to get you guys thinking about how to build your team. And, uh... This video, there was a lot that I said in the beginning of that video talking about you need to know this, you need to know that. To be honest, you do if you want to utilize and get the best advantages of your dragons. But I understand at the same time that a lot of you guys don't even have access to half of the shit that I'm going to be talking about to even pick and choose. You're probably just going to get a couple of good dragons here and there at the beginning until you're like level 60, 70, and then you're just going to play the dragons that you get. That's totally fine. And that's what this video is going to have in mind more so than the people that, like me, that has, uh, as you can see here, tons of different dragons to, you know, legendary dragons, albeit too, to choose from. I, I have a, a more wide variety than I think um, that a lot of people do. And... Um, Let's get straight into it, because I don't want to waste too much time. So, the most, what I would say the easiest and most successful uh, build, so to speak, because this video is going to be all about Dragon Tamer builds. I, I, I kind of wanted to not say, you know, best builds or any bullshit like that, because there is no best. You know, when, because you get to see the other person's dragons before you attack um, in Arena and... There's different dragons for different types of functions other than arena. There is no like, oh, this partic these particular sets of dragons just shit on everybody. Some are better than others, but every legendary dragon, especially, I think, has their purpose. Some do it better than others, but I think everyone has their purpose. And to say best, I, I dislike that, that word sometimes, but um, that's why I'm going to say example team builds, okay? So, the most, you might hear my girl watch this in the background, I ignore that. Um, the most uh, common type of build is going to be a balance type build where you have uh, two AoE or one AoE and one nuke. You'll also have a tank or protector on your team um, that, that may or may not be a healer, you might have a tank that does healing, you, it might be a squishy guy that does healing, but you're gonna have some type of protector type, usually a tank, um, on your team, I'll show you what that looks like in a second, um, you're gonna have a buffer, a buffer is usually pretty important, and then you're gonna have, a, a disabler, uh, typically, and then that covers, um, a lot, and that buffer can be a buffer or debuffer, when I say buffer, buffer or debuffer, and, and that's going to pretty much cover um, a pretty much balanced team that can take on pretty much anything on a game. Albeit it might not be the best for certain um, things um, in here. But it will be the best um, in terms of uh, how reliable it is. And what does that look like, right? Um, so my team is actually pretty much a balanced team through and through. Um, and then I'll go in and explain to you uh, why I think that this team is good, especially for a beginner to start off on. And uh, let's start. I would honestly start with your damage dealers. I like the one AoE, one nuke. And the reason why I like that over uh, two AoE is because let's say you really want to kill their uh, tank that's healing or you really want to kill that healer or you want to kill their big boy damage deal that's a little bit squishy the the nuke will have that third skill um with like a fuck ton of damage on it and it'll allow you to um burn up one of their uh, dragons really really quickly especially their damage dealers if you have two aoe you'll do more damage to everyone overall but you won't necessarily kill somebody on that first round of turns with the um nuke you're able to do that more more times than not. So for my nuke, I'm using Ruby. And what makes him particularly formidable, in my opinion, one, because I have him start up all the way. That in itself is formidable. But 
Um, he can reduce defense, and uh, his second skill does a fair good bit amount of damage f on top of reducing defense. And then he has this ability, albeit it doesn't necessarily burn somebody up right right away on that next turn. That damage over time tick is pretty hard, right? So I use him as my uh, particular nuke, um, mainly because he's uh, all the way started up. Some other notable nukes that kind of do the same thing that he does. Uh, Hades ignores the armor. The, uh, the defense, fuck ton of damage, um, can re can do healing reduction as well, whatever, um, so that's nuke, um, now the AOE comes in, uh, my, my particular favorite is definitely Nyx, um, for one, he has a dark typing on his, uh, third skill, which is very effective against a lot of different types, now, it's not the most damaging heavy um, third skill, but it does come with some uh, healing uh, reduction, which is nice, uh, when, especially when their team has healers. Um, and then his, his base stats in general are just crazy high. Um, his, his attack and his uh, crit is some of the highest. That's one of the highest combos together that you can get as far as damage is concerned. Squishy, but he has that damage. Now... Then you kind of want to pair that damage with somebody that can keep them alive, a support tank, or some some somebody that can get the damage off of them. There's a lot of different ways to do that. My particular way that, that I've chosen how to do that is with Kerr. Um, Kerr, Kerr does two things. He can heal. He can do uh, very focused uh, target healing on one person. Real low cooldown, only once, one uh, turn, so you can use this throughout the match quite frequently and on top of that he has this really really good and it used to be better they, they nerfed it a little bit but um he has this cool ability where he can give everyone a shield for two turns and he can um give you damage uh reduction it re you reduce the amount of damage you do by quite a bit for two turns so it really is a a, a, a very formidable um skill to use especially when you're talking about protecting somebody that's squishy give them that shield and reducing the damage that they're taking and on top of that you can heal them back up great 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 protector and his on his off uh when his skills are down you can also uh, uh hit somebody and get a little bit of his own hp back so you don't have to worry about healing him as much and getting that healing out to the people that you actually want to give it to great not to mention his health stat is good, great damage to really support that attack base HP healing. Um, now his defense particularly isn't that strong, but that's okay because the 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 health it compensates more than enough. You see all the fucking health that I have with him. Okay, and he's not the only one. I'm kind of going in and explaining my particular team, but a lot of these elements is what you should be looking for when you um make make your team okay um buffers somebody that can give you the leg up sometimes you don't want more damage you just want to increase the damage that you're already doing and, and augment the dragons that you already have especially the damaged ones and um i particularly like to do that with genie genie is a monster of a of a dragon he increases your speed bar by 20 percent That'll pretty much make sure that almost all of your dragons pretty much attack first. Um, he has really crazy speed right off the rip. So nobody, not too many dragons actually beat him. And if you make sure that you get a dragon brand that has uh, speed on it, on that second slot, almost nobody will beat him unless they do the same thing that you do. Right? Almost nobody. There are a few counters. So I'm going to get into all of that because that might be too much for this particular video. But... Very, very good dragon. And then also um, increasing that attack. I think it goes all the way up to 25% once it's all said and done. But increasing that uh, attack stat, um, especially on a... I don't know if it increases the base number or it takes into account the additional effects that you have. Like this plus 1086. I don't know what which one it does, but it doesn't really matter. Because when you augment that damage, you definitely feel it. 
Um, he also has a, a wee bit of healing. It, 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 you know, it's, it's it's not really all that, but it, it, it can make a difference. Um, just a little bit of extra year attacking and getting a little bit of health back. Whatever. This skill is um, pretty much, you can throw it away. But where it's at, it's really him buffing up enemies. And then um, he, he is fast, and he does have an okay amount of uh, tankiness to him. Um, and that's what I would honestly go for because these other skills are uh, not really necessary. Now, my disabler, and the reason why I think disablers are undervalued is because a lot of people don't build them the right way or get the value. Rini. Now, this isn't a dragon that's really meant to do a lot of damage. You can tell it by the, the, the damage numbers. Like 124% for for this particular type of skill isn't relatively high because some of these skills can get up to 196 or something like so. 124 is like low, right? But that 30% chance to stun, good number. Also, this one low damage for an AOE skill of of, of you know this caliber, but 25% chance to stun. Now, when people run into the problems that with disablers is they think that they're supposed to do damage and then stun. But their stunning is supposed to be their primary function or the, the CC itself. And what you do to actually augment that is by using the skiff shards. The uh, skiff dragon brands, rather not shards. Wrong game. And um, what it does is it increases your effective hit, which increases your chance to um, apply effects to CC effects to the dragon so the the brand that you actually want to make sure that you have on there is that fourth brand skiff it can have get roll effective hit on it you want to max that out to the fullest fucking extent of the law and, and then you also want to do skiff because skiff will give you effective hit and if you do all six you'll get the four set bonus and then you'll also get another 15 additional percent effective hit and I like the skiff because when they do attack you, you have an, a, another chance uh, to, to stun an enemy. That's like crazy wicked strong. Like you, they try to hit you, they get stunned. You hit them, they get stunned. It's a great combination. And it, and it works not just on this character but other ones. And then like you can decide whether you want, you know, defense or attack or... Or anything like that on there. Um, I'm choosing to go a little bit with attack. Um, Cause something like this one, the first, uh, third, and fifth are fixed. So it's, it's, this is always going to be attack. I don't know why I'm talking about this. We ain't gonna talk about that. That'll be in the next video. Like I got speed here. I like speed. Uh, I have obviously the effective hit, and then I have a wee bit of damage because out of some some disables are more defensive focused and some disables are more attack focused. You have to look at the dragon and, and see which one uh is which. You can clearly see his attack is good and his crit is eh, but and you obviously see his defense isn't uh very exceptional, which is why I chose for one of them to be more attack. But that's a standard balance team. There's other um teams that can work um i don't want to get into those right now because i haven't put enough information on my channel to to give you guys enough information to understand necessarily what i'm saying most of you guys i think would but some of you guys haven't been playing long enough and aren't privy to a lot of the dragons to 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 make that decision to really understand what's going on yet now to compensate for that I do plan on doing um, in-depth dragon videos on each dragon, maybe five, ten minutes, so you can get an idea of each dragon and what are the benefits. Um, with that being said, I hopefully I explained this video kind of well. I wanted to do more in the video, but I didn't want to make it over 15 minutes. I went over what a balanced team looks like, good defense, good protection, damage, disabling to fuck up what they got going on and hopefully your dragons will become all-stars your teams will be all-star bills once you consider all this thanks for watching